Good morning. It's 4.45 in the morning and we woke up early to catch the sunrise at Angkor Wat. So we're on our way to see the sunrise at Angkor Wat and it's still very early and it's actually kind of chilly so my friend here Pia, <laughs> brought the scarf which is uh, very fitting for this kind of um, temperature so the roads are wet and because it rained overnight but i think we're very lucky because it's not raining and hopefully the weather stays the same throughout the day um, so that we can explore a lot of the, the temples um, in good weather. It's still dark. Can you see my friend? <laughs> <laughs> we were dropped off by our tuk-tuk. So that's the probably the uh, place where tourists are being dropped off. Um, it's very dark. Um, in fact, if I turn off this light... We might you, not see anything. Yeah, but I can see the... Don coming. Yeah, so Don is there. We'll just um, concentrate on our walking. We don't want to slip <laughs> or trip. <laughs> because you can barely see the road. Yeah, we can yeah, we can barely see the road. So we'll see you later. I'll try to catch a nice time lapse of the sunrise and hopefully it works. So uh, the sun has risen and you can see in the background how beautiful it is. It was a magical experience for me, you know, seeing the colors change, um, the sky changing from black to light blue to a shade of purple to a shade of yellow and then orange. It was magical. The peaks. It's good that we came early, so we had we got a relatively good spot and I think after five minutes of setting up the camera there were a lot of tourists um, that came in so, and this is the lo relatively you know, low, low season it's rainy season and it's just pandemic a lot of tourists came but not as much in fact we got the front row. yeah we, we got the front row <laughs> <laughs> and maybe just to see you how many tourists there are. Some of them already went inside the temple to explore. Um, but a while ago, this particular area was filled with um, tourists. There. We were surrounded by Spanish tourists. You can hear them speak in, yeah, in Spanish. And the one beside me is quite funny. Um, she had this um, stuffed toy as well. Oh, yeah, I also have Which reminded me of Tata and. Suki. So I took a picture of Tata and my sister said he's dead because he's floating in the water. <laughs> I hope you can see it. There he is. <laughs> Sleeping Tata floating in the water. So he's dead now. <laughs> Look at that view. It's also nice. So that's actually across where we were. Okay, so now we're heading towards the temple. Angkor Wat the largest monument of the Angkor group and the best preserved is an architectural masterpiece. Its perfection in composition, balance, proportions, and sculpture make it one of the finest monuments in the world. Covered galleries with columns define the boundaries of the first and second levels. The third level supports five towers, four in the corners and one in the middle and is the most prominent architectural feature of Angkor Wat. In symbolism, 
Angkor Wat is a miniature replica of the universe in stone and represents an earthy model of the cosmic world. The central tower rises from the center of the monument, symbolizing the mythical mountain Meru, situated at the center of the universe. Its five towers correspond to the peaks of Meru. The outer wall corresponds to the mountain at the edge of the world, and the surrounding moat, the oceans beyond. So this art wall represents um, Earth in the middle, heaven above, and hell at the bottom. So it depicts the different lives of the people in heaven, earth, and hell. This panel is called Churning of the Ocean Milk, which was derived from the Indian epic Bhagavata Purana. The ocean of milk is churned by gods and demons to generate the elixir of life. The purpose of churning is to recover lost treasures, and the retrieval of these objects symbolizes prosperity. Alright, so we're going to the second level of Angkor Wat. And as you can see, there's uh, stairs. And there's also a lot of restoration ongoing. And our tour guide said, you know, the restorations don't stop. So they just keep on restoring, restoring, restoring. And to preserve this ancient um, wonder. So now we're going to the third um, level of Angkor Wat and my friend Pia will go there first so you can see me climb the stairs. Um, it's very steep. There's probably around 40 um, steps or maybe more. Okay, so see you later. Alright, now I'm starting my ascent uh, on the steep stairs. So it's really nice. It's a, it's a nice view. So you can see here one of the peaks. and. It's good that they have handrails as well, so it's easy for tourists to climb up. And let me just turn around and see, wow, okay. This is a nice view of the complex, but the sun is there, so that's the east side. And, okay. Okay. So that's it. We are now at the third level of Angkor Wat. And we found out that we cannot use the 360 camera. So the normal GoPro, the hero cameras can be used, but not the 360. statues here um, who lost um, their heads because people are stealing them before and selling them in the black market. Okay, so now we're here at the third level of Angkor Wat and you can see behind the tallest tower, that's the fifth tower and this is how it looks like here. Okay. So you can see Walter walking back to the no axis. 
behind him is one of the towers of Angkor Wat. But as you can see, the sign says no access, so you really can't go inside it. All right, so this is the end of visit, which is the exit. So this is also the entrance to this uh, third level. And I'll go down, followed by my friend. So as you can see, it's very, very steep. And I have to concentrate on going down, or else you won't see this flower. <laughs> I have made it to the bottom. All right, so my friend. So I'm about to go down, descent. and it's very steep. Um, actually, some people are having a hard time going down, especially um, older people. And I'd say kudos to Tita Walter's aunt and mom <laughs> who were able to climb up the tower and down way back when they visited. It's steep, but it's okay. It's tolerable because they have handles um, that can help you go down. But if you're a little scared of heights, I am actually scared of heights. It's a little overwhelming to go down. But I'm almost there. How many steps? Some more. One, two, three. So I'm here. And I'm safely down. How was it? Okay lang. <laughs> the, the lady in front of me was very, very scared. She was scared. She was Early. telling me she will take time. I said, it's okay. It's very steep. <laughs> so and now we're going back to the hotel. It was a magical experience, I would say, um, witnessing the sun rise against the Angkor Wat um, background. Or actually, Angkor Wat foreground. And after that, we went and explored Angkor Wat. And there's so many stories um, that our tour guide said. Very interesting ones. And you can see how, you know, how they built this temple and the stories behind it. Like, really dates back to a long, long time ago. From the construction using elephants um, up to the Kings. The temple or, just for worshipping, not uh, to live. Uh, I mean, the king did not live here. Oh. But the king lived in the wooden houses and wooden palaces okay. in Angkor Wat. Uh, so, Tom. yeah. But of course, all of the temples, so mm. the, the state temple when the king still alive, became a tomb when the king died. Mm. I oh. mean that when they died, they cremated the body and then collected some remains to put in the golden urn to bury it at the underneath of the most central tower. But most of golden urns got stolen. At the center? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. People coming from this area. So we're currently at the center of Angkor Wat. 